So I came across this concept of being able to use compressed air as stored energy. And I thought to myself, why don't we apply that to using the, um, the ocean's waves to create that compressed air? We're all familiar with coal-fired uh, power plants. This is where we get our electricity from. We, we burn coal, we create heat, we boil water, we create steam. The steam then turns turbines, the turbines turn generators, and that's what produces our alternating current electricity. And these things are massive, you know, the open cut mines, the burning of the coal, it, it's all bad for the environment. Here's a gas fired power station. So again, burning gas, non-renewable resource to uh, heat water, create steam, turn a turbine and produce electricity. And it's all very bad for the environment. We need to move away from these things. And you can see the coal fired power stations and the gas fired power stations are massive. And what I'm wanting to to try and do is see if we can just use wave energy to create compressed air. So the compressed air is what's then turning the turbines and generating electricity. So looking at the system, we go from a transformer, um, there's a generator, there's a turbine, there's containers of compressed air, a big high pressure polyethylene pipeline that goes into the ocean. And it gets um, it's just full of compressed air and the compressed air comes in the form of these pistons. They're just effectively piston pumps and we're using wave action to generate compressed air. The green line that you can see there represents still water and the two red lines represent the height of a wave, the top, the crest of a wave and the trough of the wave. And that's what we're trying to, to, to utilize, the height difference. And as the wave rolls through those big flotation devices, it lifts them up and sucks air in and compresses air. We know that the shape of the waves change with the shape of the seabed. And there's all sorts of different mechanisms that we can, that we can, that we can put into this design that utilizes um, different heights of the seabed. And if you've ever sailed around the ocean, you'll have a really good understanding of, of waves don't really come in nice big straight lines. Um, the waves are formed from wind that swirls around the low pressure system. So waves are generated in all sorts of different directions. And we really only see the waves that hit our shores um, as that energy then dissipates uh, as it comes up, up the beach. But in reality, in the ocean, waves don't move in nice, regular, straight lines. And so here's what I wanted to do. I want to create a f a effectively a farm. And this farm is made up of big flotation devices they are all driving piston pumps. So it suck air in, it has a compression stroke, and it pumps that, that high pressure air back into a line, which then itself is a big um, uh, storage unit. So there's, there's, there's stored energy in compressed air. And so these get laid out across the seabed. You can see there's the, the flotation pumps. Um, they go up and down as the waves move through the, um, through the farm, and they can create compressed air. That compressed air is stored in those, those big pipes that you see underneath the seabed. They then come up uh, onto land, and all the, all the, the electrical componentry of, of the system is all on land. There's no generators out in the sea. And this means the maintenance uh, is really easy. The connections are really easy. You don't have to worry uh, about having generators in a salt water environment, which is really disastrous with, with, with electrical currents as well. In this scenario, you can see multiple generators, which also builds in redundancy. Everyone's probably pretty familiar with the, with the concept of a syringe. It's a, it's a, there's a piston and a cylinder. You pull the piston out, you draw it out, you draw air in, and then you squeeze it and you push the air back out again. It's a very simple process. It's exactly like how a car engine works. There's a, a suction stroke and a compression stroke. And the system of these boys works very similar, except for we want to be able to suck air in from one end and then push it out at the other end. So we have a donut shaped plunger effectively. So we have two cylinders, an outer cylinder and an inner cylinder. And the in inner cylinder is what is used then to connect to the main system underneath. So the system relies on the fact that water is about 800 times denser than air. Um, and using um, buoyancy, we able to use, um, we able to create a, a massive amount of compression. 
This is then transferred down a pipe and this pipe of highly compressed air is connected to the sea floor and it's connected to the sea floor in a number of different ways. And you can see here there's a universal um, swivel joint which allows the whole thing to just kind of float around as it needs to in, in the waves. There's a flexible pipe which is connected to some non-return valves and some isolating valves uh, and then the big giant high pressure pipe at, at the center of it all. So at the bottom of the stroke, this is where the float is at the bottom of the trough. It sucks in a huge amount of air and really just the weight of the entire system is what is used to draw air into the, into the outer um, cylinder space. As the wave moves through, within seconds that buoy is lifted up and all of that air is then squeezed into that inner cylinder. And what you're seeing at the moment, that red volume inside there represents about half a cubic meter of air per, per stroke. So every, every stroke that goes up and down, it sucks in half a, half a cubic meter of, of air. So let's have a look at the system. So here is the inner cylinder and the flotation buoy on the outside, the piston rods, and the um and the and the piston itself this donut shaped piston so here is at the bottom of the stroke and here it is at the top of the stroke so this is at the top of the compression stroke so the wave lifts the buoy up um, and it squeezes all of the air from the outside cylinder into the inside cylinder through these holes now these holes are just there representing um the concept these holes uh do have a, a non-return valves in, in them so on the right hand side you see that, that structure with the green tube. This represents the outer sleeve. Now I've done this in a, in a transparent glass looking shape but it's really just stainless steel. You can see the inner the piston rods, that donut shaped piston and the inner, um, the inner cylinder effectively. Now I haven't shown the detail of, of the cap. The cap is very important um, and how it works. It allows air to be drawn in um, without getting water into the system as best as possible. It then gets pumped down that central cylinder and comes out the bottom. Now the bottom of this, this, this particular drawing here is representing a cylinder which is connected to the ground by some sort of means. You can see the, there's a flexible pipe that then feeds to the main pressure line. There's also an articulation joint which allows the unit to swivel and this, in this particular instance we're demonstrating that um, the connection method here is via a screw pile driven deep, deep, deep into the ground if possible, if it's shallow enough. If not, maybe a big weighted system um, could be implemented as well. The flexible hose goes to a coupling, there's a non-return valve in there and then there's this mechanism of isolating it as well. So the divers can go down and they can isolate each of the individual pumps themselves. Now when the water is deep, um, these things actually float and there is no solid rod that connects it all to the ground. They are simply anchored down by uh, the weights and the anchoring mechanism at the bottom uh, and a big chain. There's an, an air line which feeds the, the main uh, the main pressure pipe and at the bottom of the cylinder is a mechanism for um, if any water gets into the system it can actually be pumped out under pressure as well and you can see here a mechanism of keep keeping that anchoring point nice and tight so we're looking at a, a very green uh, energy solution it's just used as wave energy creates compressed air other forms like um, the wind farms, the, uh, the solar farms, you know, if they're not pumping uh, power directly into the grid, then we need to be able to use stored power and, and that usually would come in the form of lithium batteries and the mining of lithium batteries is also really bad for the environment as well. So it's just an alternative for generating stored energy in the form of compressed air to drive turbines.